Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu was taken to the hospital and underwent emergency heart surgery yesterday morning. There's a lot of tension in the air today in Israel as the Knesset is supposed to pass into law the first of the judicial reforms. The political left in Israel is having a tantrum and doing everything they can think of to try and stop this controversial bill, including manually submitting 27,000 objections against the bill. Literally. I'm Josiah, and this is The Israel Guys. That video clearly shows you the fake news media narrative of the brutality of the IDF against Palestinians is completely false because this little Palestinian boy is not in the least bit scared of the Israeli soldier who's walking with him holding a casual conversation. Maybe the little boy was mad at him. I couldn't understand uh, the Arabic that he was speaking. Welcome to the Israel Guys, where we believe that in a world of Jew hatred and anti-Israel propaganda, you should have a direct connection to the land and people of Israel. Welcome back to the show, guys. It's great to be back with you here this week. First off, uh, we ask you to pray for Israel's Prime Minister, Benjamin Netanyahu. He is uh, recovering in the hospital from a successful heart surgery uh, that he had yesterday morning. The Daily Wire reported Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said in a video posted to his Twitter account during the early morning hours on Sunday that he has to undergo an emergency heart surgery. Uh, procedure after he was hospitalized several days ago. If you guys remember last week, Netanyahu was hospitalized at the Sheba Medical Center in Tel Ashomer after he lost consciousness and fell, hitting his head at his home. The incident was initially believed to be caused by dehydration. Now there's fur further issues. In the video, we'll play it. He said, I want to update you on what's going, on, going to happen. Last week, they gave me a monitoring device. The device beeped and said I need a pacemaker and I need to do that already tonight. I feel great, but I listen to my doctors. The doctors tell me that I will be free tomorrow afternoon already. I will be discharged from the hospital, ready to arrive at the Knesset for the vote. Um, the Prime Minister's office also said that the Justice Minister and Deputy Minute Prime Minister, Yariv Levin, would uh, serve as acting Prime Minister while Netanyahu was under sedation, so the country was in good hands while Netanyahu was down under Thankfully, the Sheba Medical uh, Center announced the procedure was a complete success and the Prime Minister's medical condition, condition is good and he is recovering well. We thank God for that. Please continue to pray for his recovery. So what is the uh, this vote that Netanyahu is talking about? We're going to get into that in just one second. But first, make sure to subscribe to the Israel Guys. We really appreciate it when you do that. Also, hit that like button and the notification bell so that you never miss an episode of The Israel Guys. Also, you can check out our social media pages. All the links are down in the description below. All right, guys, the first piece of the judicial reform legislation, which would limit the use of the reasonableness, reasonableness standard, is set to be approved and passed into law sometime today in the Knesset. On Wednesday night this last week, a Knesset committee finally okayed the second and third readings of the bill to be held on Sunday, yesterday, and, all, and the bill is actually expected to be passed into law sometime today or tomorrow. And by the way, the way passing legislation in the Knesset works is that every bill brought to the Knesset to be passed has to go through three readings, has to pass and be voted on three readings, and then it can be voted into actual law. Um, I say the committee finally okayed the second and third readings because the approval for the final readings of the bill came after several very long sessions of the committee. And when I say very long, I mean like overnight sessions of the committee. Uh, it's actually called the Constitution Law and Justice Committee in the Knesset. And the reason it was so long is because the opposition brought forth 27,000 objections to the bill with the intention of slowing down and halting the legislation. Yes, the opposition literally submitted 27,000 reservations against the bill. And it uh, kind of seems at this point that the left is grasping at straws to do anything they can to try and stop or even delay the legislation from moving forward. Now, you might be asking, what exactly is the legislation Netanyahu's government is trying to pass today and tomorrow? And just to give you a brief overview, a brief explanation, 
the reasonableness standard bill is an amendment to the basic uh, basic law, the judiciary, basic law judiciary. There's 13 of them. One of them is called the judiciary that would block Israel's courts from applying what is known as the reasonableness standard to decisions made by elected officials. The reasonableness standard actually allows for the judicial review against the government that are deemed to be um, beyond the scope of what a responsible and reasonable authority would undertake. So if the Supreme Court thinks something the government passing is not reasonable, even if it's not going against any of the 13 basic laws of Israel, which stand as a, as a sort of constitution, then they can strike that down based on it being not reasonable. So the, the current Knesset is trying to, um, to curb that, that authority of the Supreme Court to be able to do that. We'll be back in just one second, but first, I wanted to tell you about one of the best ways you can support Israel right now. You should join the Heartland Challenge. Now, what is the Heartland Challenge? Got some stuff right here. This is a ceramic mug made right here in the biblical heartland of Israel. These are soaps made also here in the biblical heartland of Israel, Judea and Samaria, by what the world calls illegal settlers who are actually pioneers who are living in the land that God promised to the Jewish people. One of the best ways you can support them is by joining the Heartland Challenge, where you take one product, just say soap, for one month, and you commit to only purchasing that item from Judea and Samaria. Now, if you're wondering how in the world can I get these products made in Israel to my doorstep in the United States, our friends at Blessed by Israel make it super easy for you. They source these incredible product products plus a lot more from small businesses located in Judea and Samaria, and they ship those products straight to your doorstep. We've partnered with Blessed by Israel to pr promote the Heartland Challenge, encouraging supporters of Israel all around the world to commit to only using certain products from Judea and Samaria. So whether it's olive oil, tea, soaps, ceramics, chocolate, coffee, or something else, Blessed by Israel is encouraging everyone to buy what you believe in and then share the message with your community and friends. It's time to build and invest in the heartland of Israel. Join the Heartland Challenge and start making a difference today. To find out more, go to blessedbuyisrael.com. Again, that is blessedbuyisrael.com to find out more. And if you use the code invest, I-N-V-E-S-T, at checkout, you get $5 off your first order just because we're friends with Blessed by Israel. Link is in the description below. So who is really uh, against the bill? And the question that I have is, are they really opposed to this legislation itself, or are they actually against the government behind bringing this legislation forward? The interesting thing is that the opposition has been fighting against Netanyahu's government and stirring up Israelis in the nation of Israel to protest and demonstrate literally the minute they lost the election last November and way before Netanyahu announced the current judicial reform plan. Um, another well-known figure that has lately expressed his opposition to this bill is the former Israeli Supreme Court President Aharon Barak, Aaron Barak, who is actually known as the father of the judicial revolution of the 1990s. That, curiously enough, in many ways caused the need, the current need for judicial reform in Israel's government. Aaron Barak put out a statement yesterday saying, quote, I strongly oppose the bill to abolish or reduce the reasonableness standard and am convinced that the proposal, if approved by the Knesset, will seriously damage the fundamental values of Israel as a Jewish and democratic state, end quote. Now, the statement is very interesting because just four years ago, he published remarks stating that he was not, quote, a big fan of the reasonableness standard used by the Supreme Court. Is he against the bill or is he just against Netanyahu's right-wing government? There have also been tens of thousands of protesters who have been protesting against Israel's, uh, the judicial reforms in the last six months and more demonstrations took place this weekend as well. The protesters block roads and even threw some objects, rocks at the Ayalon Highway, Needless to say, the Israeli police made some very justified arrests in the protest with those that were breaking the law and causing violence. The fact about this minority of Israelis is that they, are, they too are less worried about specific reform issues than they are with the right-wing government that was democratically elected by the citizens of Israel. 
And the main things that they are worried about, about the government, are baseless fears propagated by those that hate Net Netanyahu and the right-wing sector of Israel. Another person who is causing a little bit of delay is the defense minister of Israel, Yoav Gallant, who is a Likud party member. He has actually started discussing with Netanyahu the possibility of extending the summer session of the Knesset to reach a more broad agreement on the reasonableness standard. So it is not a sure thing that the legislation will be passed today or tomorrow, but we know that the coalition, Netanyahu's coalition, is doing everything possible to get all the members of the Knesset who are part of the coalition government to be there in the Knesset for the vote. On the positive side, thousands of people gathered at the Western Wall yesterday morning to pray for the unity of the people. The incredible thing is that people from both sides of the reform aisle gathered together to pray and sing. Among those who were gathered there were Rabbi Yaakov Medan, who is the dean of the Haaretzion Yeshiva, also Rabbi Rim Hakohen, uh, some MKs were there, MK Matan Kahana, also National Unity Party Chairman Benny Gantz was there as well as many other leaders from both sides of the spectrum. This illustrates, I believe, a broader feeling throughout the nation of Israel of the want for unity in the land, especially from the political right. Now, that being said, the government and the right-wing sector of Israelis, they want unity, but they also don't want the minority who is causing all the racket with the protests to win the day and bring down the democratically elected government of Israel. Guys, with all the internal political discussions happening in Israel today, we can pray for the nation that there will be unity and that good would be accomplished in Israel. Another good part is that the current government is the most right-wing conservative and religious government Israel has ever had. And when, I mean, when, and when I say religious, I mean politicians who fear God and base their beliefs in the Bible and also who have a deep love for the land and people of Israel. Guys, don't forget to check out Blessed by Israel. Join the Heartland Challenge to support Judea and Samaria. Don't forget to subscribe and get the conversation going down below. We love interacting with you in the comments. And as always, tune out the fake news and tune into what is actually happening here in the land of Israel. We'll be back every day, Monday through Friday, with your direct connection to the land and people of Israel.